As we go into your word, our Lord, please grant us understanding. As you unveil to us, still in the first commandment, as we look into why, as your children, why, as your creatures, we need to be loyal to you and you alone. Please help us, Lord, to believe your word, to understand your word, believe it, and to put it into practice from today. Speak expressly, O God, because we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. Somebody say amen. 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 We have been looking at the book of Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20. And um, last week, we dwelt in verse 3. And this week, we're also going to dwell in verse 3. Because we have not concluded the verse 3 actually. Exodus 20 verse 3 says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. So we are trying to explore the other gods. And we have seen that the other gods are various things. First of all, we have seen that we need to be loyal to God and to God alone. And the reason is by one, because of God's uniqueness. And then two, which one we want to consider today, because of God's redemptive act. What did I say? God's redemptive hearts. Hallelujah. Why you need to be loyal to God alone? Why you need God and God alone? Why you need to worship Him alone? Why you need Him and Him alone? He redeemed you. He's redeeming you. He will redeem you. He will continue to redeem you. And on the last day, you will be redeemed. Because of his redemptive act, we must be loyal to him and him alone. He rescued the Israelites from bondage. And that was where in the rescue, in the rescue camp, I would call it. That was where he gave them this commandment. Because he brought them forth out of Egypt. Where they have been for 430 years. They have passed through many difficult situations. They were multitude. There were so many. No matter how many they were. God did what? Rescue them. God did what? Rescue them. He brought them out as a very powerful and strong army. Hallelujah. God also redeemed you or rescued you from sin and the trap of the devil, of Satan the devil. He redeemed you from the trap of Satan the devil. He redeemed you from sin. If you are a child of God, you have been redeemed from sin. If you are not a child of God, God is able to rescue you from sin. If you are under demonic oppression, demonic possession, God is able to rescue you from those oppression or possession. All you need to do is to be loyal to him alone. Are you getting me? Loyal to him alone. Because the Bible says in John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so you that are not believing in Jesus Christ, if you come to Jesus today, you'll be rescued from sin. Because God's redemptive act is still very potent even today to rescue you if you believe in Jesus. And Paul said 
in the book of Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Let me read that one quickly. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. Turn your Bible with me please. Galatians 2 20. Galatians 2 20. Turn your Bible. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me, and gave himself for me. How did he give himself to Paul? By rescuing him from sin. By rescuing him from every satanic trap. And so, Paul said, look, I am crucified with Christ. I am so attached to Christ because he rescued me. I am loyal to Christ alone. I am loyal to God because if you are loyal to Christ, you are loyal to God. If you are loyal to Christ, you are what? You are loyal to God. No. Now let me, you know, I've, I've, I've proved this several times, but let, let me read one other part for you so that you understand. When Jesus Christ was telling the apostles, when they were asking him, please show up the Father. The other said, if you are loyal to Christ, you are loyal to who? You are loyal to God. Jesus Christ said to them, in the book of um, John chapter 14, Philip said in verse 8, Lord, show us the Father, and he sufficed us. Verse 9, Jesus Christ said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet has thou not known me? Philip, can you understand that? Do you understand what's going on there? Philip was saying, Oh Jesus, show us the Father. And Jesus Christ responded. He said, Have I been with you so much, you don't know me? He was trying to tell you that, Look, ah, show us the Father. I just told you that I am the Father. Because he said, in verse 7, if ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So Jesus Christ said, Look, I am the father. Because he now said in verse 7, Believe thou not that I am the father. I am in the, I am in the father. No, let me read verse 9. He said, He that has seen me has seen the father. And now says thou then, Show us the father. If you have seen me, you have seen what? The father. So Jesus Christ is saying what? He is God. He's operating in a God form. Though he's in the flesh in form of Jesus Christ. And so Paul was trying to say in that Galatians chapter 2 that look, I am loyal to Christ. I have been crucified with him. Never the Lord I live, but the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith. The faith I have in Jesus. He loved me and he gave himself for me. So I'll be loyal to him because he rescued me from sin. Hallelujah. I want you to think of something. Think very well. When you find yourself in a difficult situation, some of us, you know, these days is so common. These days, the name of Jesus has turned to swelling word. We use it anyhow. Anyhow, we use it nowadays. Anyhow. Any smart Jesus. Why are you calling Jesus? Somebody is just telling you something. Say, hey, Jesus. What have you said? Hey, Jesus, what are you saying? What is the connection of Jesus with what that person is telling you? We use it anyhow. Don't use that name anyhow. Because at the time you need it, it may not work for you again. Because you are fond of saying it anyhow. But listen to me. In the past, of you who have experienced things in the past. Maybe you have seen yourself in one danger or the other. Maybe you have been in a car accident before. And when the accident was about to happen, you mentioned the name Jesus. And before you knew it, you were delivered out of that accident. And when people looked at the car, the car was wrecked. But you, you are out of the car. They were wondering, how did you get out there? Because you called the name what? Jesus. And that's what you are sick almost to the point of death. And because it was not time for you to go. And you said, oh Jesus, please help me. And he came to your rescue. When you are in a difficult situation, 
When you don't have any place to go, you have tried this, it did not work. You have tried that, it did not work. You have tried this other place, it did not work. But now you remember that there is a God in heaven who have said we cannot come to him except through Jesus Christ. He said, no one comes to the Father except through me. And you remember, you said, Lord God, I have tried all I could. Right now, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Please help me out of this deadly and unbearable situation. And the Lord came to your rescue. Hey, he rescued you. He will rescue you. He will come to rescue you. And you will be redeemed on the last day if you trust and continue to believe in who? In Jesus. Nobody could help you. Are you really loyal? loyal to Jesus? Are you really loyal to God? Are you sure you don't have other gods who are contending with the one and only true God in your life? Are you sure you are not having another God? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. That's what the Lord said. Are you sure you are not having a God in you that you are worshipping? Anything that takes the place of God in your life has become your God. Are you listening to me? Anything that has taken the place of God in your life, if God is not the priority in if it is not the priority in your life, if God is not the first word in your dictionary, if God is not the first word in your in your diary, if God is not the first word when you wake up in the morning, if God is not the first thing before you do when you sleep, if God, if God is not included in everything you do, if God is not included first in whatever you do, in that business, if God is not included in your school, if God is not included in your in your workplace. If God is not included in your family, if God is not included, if God is not number one in all these things, then you are serving another God. Then you are doing what? Serving another God. And that God is now your idol. Some people serve money. Some people do what? They serve money. Jesus Christ said that you cannot serve God and money. You can serve God and what? And money. So put serve money. You can't worship God and mama. What the Bible said. In the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew 6. Are you listening to me? Let me read Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 24. Jesus Christ said, No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mama. Money can become your God. When money comes first in your life, wisdom, excuse me, wisdom can become your God. Might, wealth can become your God. When you don't put God first in your life. I'm going to read Jeremiah chapter 9. Now I want us to listen attentively. Jeremiah chapter 9 from verse 23. 23 and 24. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you with me? Jeremiah 29. Wisdom. Because you are so wise. Because you are so wealthy. Because you are so mighty. You have power. Or you are, in a, you are in a powerful position so that you have power, you have authority. If that takes priority in your life, then that has become your idol. That has become your God. And God, we are talking about, is no longer your God. Jeremiah 9, 23 and 24. Thus said the Lord, let not the wise glory, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. 
For let him that glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me, that I am the Lord, which is exercise loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, share the Lord. Let your glory be on Lord and God. Let God be the one in position. Let God be the one in place. In whatever thing you are doing. And as you continue to do that, the Lord himself will bless you richly in the name of Jesus Christ. For our time, I'm going to stop here. So what are the gods in your life? What are the gods in your life? God wants to be loyal to him and him alone. Because he redeems you. And he's ready to redeem you. He's ready to rescue you from any trap you find yourself. But some of us, we have thrown God away. We are worshipping money. We have thrown God away. And some of you that are worshipping this money, worshipping power, wisdom, and riches, wealth. You still go to church. You still go to church. But in your heart, in your heart and heart, God is not there. Why not come back to him today? Why not give him glory? Because he said, I delight in you understanding me and giving me glory. And not putting your, 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 giving glory, giving glory in your wisdom. Or get glory in your wisdom, glory in your, in your, in your mind, glory in your riches. Come to Jesus today. He loves you. Let us pray. By your eyes, as we pray together. If you know you have missed it. If you know you are not, you have not been loyal to God. One, one leg for God, one leg for the devil. And you don't know that what that other leg you place there is for the devil. Today I'm telling you it's for the devil. Because if God is not first in your life, then you are not loyal to him and him alone. In the self, you're loyalty to him and him alone. Why not come to Jesus today and say, Lord Jesus, please have mercy upon my soul. I've been doing it wrong, but today I make it right. Please renew my life. I dedicate my life unto you. I surrender my life unto you. Come into me and teach me the right path. Pray that prayer. And you shall be redeemed in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Establish this word in our hearts. And then every one of us, not just be the hearer of your words, but to be doers of your words. Help me that I will not just be a preacher of your word, but I will be the doer of your word. I will be loyal to you, I will be loyal to you, and I will want to be loyal to you all the days of my life. And the listeners that are making that same confession, that Lord, I've been loyal to you, and I'll be loyal to you all the day of my life. Grant them all, grant everyone of all the grace to be loyal unto you. And those who have not been loyal, who have joined the wagon of the loyal people, Lord, we pray God, you accept them, and you cleanse them from your righteousness. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We appreciate you, because we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.